Why do you have to do that? I don't know who's calling me. Uh, we got it, but I believe that we are now live on Facebook and uh, we are so excited to be here again. Teresa, I tell you what, she is showing up every day on her way to uh, make her make her moolah, make her money. So come on, Teresa, say hello to everybody and give us a good word. Say this week, what place in this week did you discover? Was there something new that really resonated with you of what you've heard this week? Well, I have to say one thing because I'm, 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 it's, it's noisy. I'm in the car, but um, the fact that we're able to share, to share all the information to share with other women is, is made me make sure that I can get on at this time because I look forward to this. And even though we're halfway there, I want another week of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody else said that, Miss Anita, what's the problem with you doing this at least once a week? And I said, could y'all let me just get through, <laughs> Jesus, let me get through this week, please. But I am, I, I'm taking it to note. I am taking it to note. So, yes, ma'am, I hear you loud and clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we appreciate you. Tell them about your, your group you have in Charlotte. Well, I started a, a, a group last year called the Ageless Women. And we were actually a group of women that are over the age of, of 40 plus. And we, we did an, a, a, um, a um, summit last year and we discussed everything from being burnt out, trying to start a new business and just going through the things that we go through as we mature. So those are things, and I'm also working with a, a local group in Charlotte called uh, um, Womb. It's women-owned minority business. So we're just getting that started off the ground, and I'm working with another um, with an organization from Richmond, Virginia, and they're actually um, starting a local chapter here in Charlotte. So stay tuned; you'll hear more about it. Oh, I want to know about that when I come visit, since I have a room in Charlotte. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, I'm you do. I promise you, I'm coming. If I had thought about it, I should have broadcast it from there. Um, but thank you so much. And we look forward to uh, the work that you're doing, partnering with, of course, the Build It Beyond uh, mm -hmm. you know, organization, Sister Sounds. And we want to find those organizations that we can help support them as well. So when our, when our visions line up and we know that we're doing things domestically that can influence domestic support, then we're gonna do it in Charlotte because that's, those are the people that are supporting what we're doing domestically. You've got Donna there, Nancy there, you're there. Um, Wanda is there, Akia is there. So we're not gonna go to Chicago. We may go to Chicago one day. We have someone with us that's from Chicago, but the people that have been with Sister Sounds all along are from Charlotte. And so we need a group that we can connect to and pour into that when we bring Build It Beyond there, we say where you need to go is where Teresa Flats. That is our connection. She is our connection. And I believe it's well overdue for us as women, and even though we have men with sister sounds and we thank God for them, there is an intention we have to support one another. And we intend to do that with you, if that's all right, if you don't mind. <laughs> Amen. All right, welcome to IBH Sister Sounds World. It is the place where we say queens convene, but we celebrate, support, and acknowledge our men. This is our eight-day worthy challenge, and we are halfway there. I'm telling you, the weather dropped this morning, Sharon and Donna, and I'll tell you what, I couldn't wake up. I was so tired. I said, but God, I thank you. We did what we needed to do, and we're here today. Now, our theme is, now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? And what I'd like to do is I'd like to just read from the a little bitty quote from Build It Beyond. If you don't have it, I want you to get it. Also, Teresa has a book that is out seven minutes. Isn't it seven minutes? You, 
Yes, seven minutes. She wants to get her book. We're expecting for our dear Sharon Magic Jordan, uh, our co-host, uh, to have her book shortly. We are pro promoting and pushing that. And we're so, so very happy to have Donna. And of course, Joy's going to get a lot of time with us today. We got Joy with us today, y'all. Yay. This is the, yes, the founder of the Center for Total Transformation. And we can see that beautiful smile. We can see her. She's in Florida. And we're going to light it up this morning. All righty. In the book, Build It Beyond, From a Dream to a Vision for Life, we're going to just oppose the same thing. Now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? And the quote is this, get to know the person you are when nobody else is in the room. Mm, get to know the person you are when no one else is in the room. Donna, now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? And who are you when no one else is in the room? That part of you that has grown, that it's going to take time for us to discover. What have you discovered? Who are you when no one else is in the room? That's a good question. Good question. <laughs> yeah. You can um, blame God on that. I said, okay, what are we going to do today, Jesus? <laughs> I, I would like to think I'm still the same person, but um, I, I still want to bring my authentic self um, to even when I'm by myself. I still want to be my womanly self when I'm by myself um, and have those same qualities that I bring um, if I'm with people or not. So I want to practice everything that I'm talking about uh, uh, about um, during the day or throughout the day. Yesterday, you talked about values. I think I told you my value is clarity. So asking myself, do I have clarity today? Or what do I need clarity on? Do I need help with anything? You know, asking those questions and um, just making sure that I'm my whole self at all times. Yes, having clarity. And the way we described it yesterday is um, to identify two values that you know are really important to you. And then what is that one area that you know, hmm, you're not quite there yet. And you don't, and, and, or either you were, say last week you weren't there, but now you know you are worthy. If you had to describe that, Donna, something that may have happened in the last couple of weeks and you were able to navigate to worthiness, what would that look like for you? Confidence, you know, we all go through fluctuation where we have high confidence mm -hmm. or in, we have low confidence. So mm -hmm. I started a new role. I talked about that to you, Anita. I have a new mm -hmm. role. I have a new leader. And she and I still didn't have the confidence to hear that this person wanted me. I told you that. I said, I don't I don't know. Why does she, she just said I don't need an interview? And I still was like, why don't I need an interview? She said, I want you. And I still was like, why do you want me? I didn't hear her saying, you know, the wonderful things about me. I blocked myself the whole time. Wow, it took me a whole wow, week wow, to tell wow, her. Oh, whoa. whoa. I this did. is good, Anita. Let's let me jump in right there. So as she began to speak, and I heard you use the word confidence. And I said it a couple of days, the first day, the third day we were here, that confidence is the body shaper of the mind. It's your mind. It's what you're thinking. It's how you feel about yourself. Self, how do I really feel about myself when no one else is watching? Yeah. And why I'm doing this, oh, I'm going to give us a little assignment, if you don't mind, Anita, if you don't mind. It is really quick. We can bring it back at the end of the eight days. If you just write these quick questions down, I want you to write a little poem about yourself, everybody, that's here today. This is going to be quick, everybody, if you can, if you can. It's quick questions. Number one, I am three qualities. I am three qualities about yourself. Everybody got that? Okay. Number two, I possess three things that you have. Something that you have. Something that you have. I am, I possess. Oh, we're talking about being worthy. Who am I? Who am I? The next one, I hear. What are you hearing?
What are you hearing in your imagination? Oh, in your imagination. What are you hearing? What am I hearing? The next one, I see. What do you see? What do you see? I am three qualities. I possess something that you have. I hear what you're hearing in your imagination. Yes. <laughs> what are you hearing in your, come with me. What are you hearing in your imagination? Mm -hmm. Three things. I see, what are you seeing? Is it in your mind's eye? Is it physical? I don't know. I see. S-E-E -E or S-E-E-K. E-E. Okay, thank you. And the next one, I want, I want. That's it. I have more later. So when you take that, thank you so much. When you take that, those four questions, now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? That's a great grid that you can use, a survey that you can use so that as we're progressing, and it seems like Sharon, they're asking for more once a week, we may have to go ahead and do it. Then this is a great, this is great content because we can take one week and we can say, I am, and we can say, I am worthy of, I hear, meaning I no longer hear the stinking thinking, the, I actually posted something today. It says, you have to catch the right wind in order to soar. And some of you have your wings spread out. You're ready to take the leap, but you're not, it's not that you're um, left out, it's not that you're forgotten, you're in the wrong company. That's all. You're, in, That's you're it. not with the right people. You're That's with it. the people that have to choose you versus you choosing the people who are like you, who are unafraid of your brilliance, who are unafraid of your beauty, who yes. are unafraid of your spirituality, who will submit to the gifting that is in you and likewise understand the beauty of being able to stand and see others submit as well. It's called mutual relationship that's healthy. So when I know that I have confidence, I know it only accents, compliments That's it. my sister Sharon. It only accents, yes. compliments Teresa. It only accents, compliments Donna and compliments Joy. So Joy, we finally got you in here, Sharon. That was like Queen's wave stuff, mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm digging it, I'm digging it. Listen. All right, Joy, we know that, well, first of all, can we just say thank you? Can we give Joy the Queen's way? Yes, yes, Joy, yes, Joy. Because honestly, sister, what you have accomplished and so much so that you're willing to leave Zimbabwe to work here to be able to help your own vision flourish. And I can't imagine, um, I, I mean, Sister Sounds is a new baby for me, but it's an old vision and it's been with me everywhere I go. I've not had to have the vision in one country, one city, and I'm in another. So we salute you. We're happy to be the wind beneath your wings, kind of like what we were just saying, so that we can say you are, you're welcome to hear the sound of love, and that you possess everything that is necessary for you to win. And if you don't have it and we got it, you got it. And that we see greatness as well as we want you to win. And because you will win, we win when you win. So would you share with us, especially if just, you know, we don't have the titles and idols and all that stuff, plenty of places to do that. But we would love to know now that you know you are worthy and we know that you had the zeal and the wisdom to go as far as you've gone. Surely we know that there's been winds that have come and sometimes those winds have been tumultuous and you have to rethink it again and keep going. Tell us now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? Okay, um, let me first of all say that um, my, my growing part, okay, I'm a work in progress. 
because sometimes I feel like I'm growing and then, you know, two steps forward, another step backward. But um, I think I can confidently say that um, I am now at the point where I am overcoming fear. Ah. I, I was really, I, I, oh gosh, that, that spirit of fear was on me so much that, um, you know, it, it really stops you from doing a lot of things. And it starts from comparing yourself with other people. And then you think you are not worthy. You think you don't qualify to do other people, what other people are saying. But um, what helped me a lot is staying in the word. Like, um, I, I don't, I'm sorry. I can't remember the name, but she was saying that you need to meditate. Yes. Um, meditate on the word of God. That really helped me. Then I started knowing who I am and whose I am. Yeah. And once that started sinking into me, you know, I, I, I could face anything. I, I started praying against spirit of fear, which was, uh, which was like a roadblock, blocking me from accomplishing so much more that I could have done. And um, also, I, I, you know, because of that growing, I'm feeling and asking for more wisdom wisdom and revelation because you can never have enough wisdom. So that's why I started by saying I'm a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I used to have serious low self-esteem before realizing who I am. And then the other day it was, um, I was quite inspired by um, what a number of people said, but one which, um, which I, I really started pondering about and meditating on is uh, the gentleman who said, know the power of your story. Mm. Because a lot of times we, well, let me say I, I didn't think what I'm doing is uh, really matters or it, it's important. So then you, I tended to, to put myself down and not, not want to talk about my story. But what I'm learning now is that uh, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if you are important, well-known or not known, but your story is important. Yes. And it's so important that um, it will change other people's lives. You know, I yes. hear stories from the women we work with all the time in Zimbabwe you know, didn't go to school much, but they have a lot of life experiences. When I hear that, gosh, it, it really builds me up. And because a lot of times we tend to think that uh, people who have worthy things to say are the educated, the elite, and that's wrong. Yes, so every, ma'am. Everyone's story matters. When that gentleman said that, I, you know, immediately I had this project in mind. I said, gosh, when I go to Zimbabwe, I want to sit with those people and hear their stories and document their stories and let them touch wow. people. So it's, uh, it's amazing. This week, even though I haven't been able to, uh, to log in a lot because of work, what I've been hearing is it's like a seminar. You know, I used to love going to seminars, going to conferences, and this is <laughs> this is it. This is it. And wow. um, but every time I, 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 you know, I get exposed to, to stuff like this, this um, wisdom, a wealth of wisdom and knowledge that you don't get to to read about every day because you you don't get to hear people's stories like this every day right you know, I, I, I always i always think of my my i, I always think of the grassroots people because they don't have an, an opportunity That's to go get on zoom they don't have an opportunity no. to go to seminars no. and they are right there in their masses the grassroots people grassroots women are more in numbers than the elites Yes, so yes. my my calling is with them. I always think of ways of getting this kind of stuff in the vernacular language 
in, in ways to touch them and in, in an exchange where they are touching our lives and we are touching theirs. Well, I, I want to say this right there and um, Sharon is aware of this as well. We've already started sending messages, virtual messages to the ladies. Uh, okay. We had her send a sound of love and Tino and I have already her son who is executor, executive director there on the ground. We now in our giving campaign, we are going to buy the generators. We're going to sponsor, well, encourage people to sponsor the generators so that we can broadcast this type of quality experience. And yes. all I'm asking is that when we'll slow down, because I know we are just going fast when we talk, <laughs> but if you will be our interpreter, We'll get Pam G and we'll get Pamela Frady to be our interpreters. We're going to learn to do Sister Sounds Africa as well. Uh, yeah. We already have a Sister Sounds Africa page. You might not have known that, uh, but we do. And if we get the generators, they'll be able to now virtually, we're gonna, uh, Tino's gonna put a big screen there Mm -hmm. And we're going to be live with IBH Sister Sounds Africa and be able to bring that dream to pass. Uh, Sharon, what are you thinking when you hear that? I mean, I know how I feel. I'm like, my oh, heart I, I'm super excited about this. Uh, and every time I see Joy's beautiful smile, oh my gosh, she lights up the room. Because what we have transcends culture. What we're bringing transcend culture. I'm telling you right now, the love that we have for our sisters. And I did send a sound of love. I haven't seen that one person, but I already feel them in my heart. That if I could just tell my story, mm. if I could tell my story, you talked about the elite, you talked about the this, you talked about the that. Most people always sit in a room and they compare. Mm. People compare all the time, but we we're all working on projected thoughts. We talked about that the other day, projected thoughts, what people are uh, saying to us, whether it's positive, whether it's negative, projected thoughts. And then we begin to respond according to that. Am I making sense, Donna? Yes. Hey, Apostle Davis, I, am I making sense? Am I making sense? Uh, projected thoughts is it, it, what we're perceiving what's being said so we're fighting the familiar we're fighting the tradition we're fighting religion we're fighting all of these things projected thoughts and then we become exhausted with that we become exhausted with that then we start to overthink then we start to overthink things and then um, i'm not good enough um, um, i'm not the pastor i'm not the apostle i'm not a ceo i'm not what you are who god say you are as if any somebody of better walk with me in your in life <laughs> It does not matter. You, I carry something that no one else really understands. <laughs> because and, and guess what? You know what, Sharon? Me. And they're not supposed to understand it because it's Sharon Magic. I, I got to say it right. Sharon Magic Jordan. <laughs> it's you being you. It's That's Bernadette it. being Bernadette. That's it. How I operate in my life to be me has no bearing on how Donna or someone. So what did you call them? She put it in the notes. What was it again? Transfer? Projected thoughts. Projected thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so That's much. That's major for me. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you for mentioning that because that's some of the, the back room stuff that I deal with. You know what yes. I'm saying? It's like, um, well, Anita, do you really think you're supposed to go global and everybody's saying it and having to shut that down because it is directly opposed to what you know on the inside. You cannot run from you. Uh -oh. That's why that question is, who are you when no one else is in the room? Ooh. Ooh. I talk too much when nobody else is in the room. I have to tell this thing and whatever that is, that is a sign that is my thorn. It's not going anywhere. It is the warfare of shut up, like meaning it just like that. Stop talking yourself out of the clouds. You have to wait for the right wind to soar. And when you get in that wind, don't deny it. Projected thoughts will cause you to shrink 
it will sink. It will. Come on, Bernadette. Magic got us out there now. Projected thoughts. How have you dealt with that? And in what ways may you maybe you have dealt with projected thoughts that have hindered you so that now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown in that area? Yes, ma'am, Bernadette. <laughs> I um uh, I don't know if you guys can hear this noise in the background, but I just landed off the plane, so I'm at my hotel, so that's why I had muted. So okay, um, well, talk real fast. Know. Okay, <laughs> give me the question real quick. I'm yes, um, before Sharon was saying to us that we have to be careful about projected thoughts because it will either cause you to soar or to sink. Yes. How has that affected your life? And now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown past that? Well, at first it did cause me to sink because I felt that I wasn't good enough to be who I wanted to be. Not so much as what people has labeled me to be, but it made me rethink how I thought about myself. But that was then. But now I am, like I said yesterday, I am who I am. You know, I appreciate me i appreciate god making me unique that yes. i can't be nobody but me and when i present myself it's up to you if you receive me or not but if you don't receive me that has nothing to do with me that i will no longer shrink down yes it, what you feel that i should look like the way i should walk or the way i should talk i am uniquely made i am a unique part of who god is Yes. And so I am not going to change me just to make you make you happy, to make you satisfied. I and what it. I used to do is shrink down yes. so I can please everybody else. But then in the silent part, I'm somewhere miserable because I'm, I'm not being my authentic self. Yes. Uh -huh. And that happened um, being from Chicago and then moving to Mississippi was a big change. And so when I did, people were like, oh, you weird looking because I dressed different. I, Lisa Bonet, I used to dress just like Lisa Bonet when she was, you know, in the Huxtable. So because of that, I changed who I was uh -huh. and I started to fit the mold of what they thought I mm. should be. And mm. for decades, I walked around in depression for almost 20 years. Wow. And so I decided, you know what, this box you all put me in, I shouldn't be in a box, but it's too small. And I kicked myself out of it. And so I started becoming myself all over again. I started embracing my uniqueness. Like everybody's doing the head wraps now. Back in the 80s, I was doing it. Everybody is into the Afrocentric colors and the African print fabric. I was doing that when I was in high school. So it's new to a lot of people now, but it's new to them, but it wasn't. So I decided to be myself. And then taking the course, having a counseling session with Miss Anita really helped me come all the way out the box and destroy the box so they don't Good have a man. box to put me in anymore they can wow they well, I, I, oh wow I'm too big for wow. a box well yes. i have to say this i have to say this just because i fashion is my background but uh we have to stop auditioning for other people's approval yes stop auditioning for other people's, it's like an audition when you go in to see the client. Uh, let me see you walk. Let me hear you run your lines. Let me see you do this. Let me see. Stop auditioning. You don't have to audition. You have the part. You are the part. The job is yours. Hey, I am the part. Y'all didn't hear me. I am the part. I don't have to audition. Thank the you. Yes. Does that yes. make any sense to anybody besides? Of course it does. Of course Stop it does. Stop auditioning. This is what is am I okay? Am I all right? Um, do you like the way I look? Uh, do you like the way I sound? Mm -hmm. No. What is your sound? Yes. What is your authentic self? Okay. Yes. Okay. I just there's a quote that I want to put out there. Don't invite me if I can't be me. Don't invite me if I can't be me. See, when I'm left out now, it's intentional. I'm not isolated. I'm not separated. I'm insulated, awaiting the group, the crowd, the people who want what I have to offer. But if you don't want me to be me, don't invite me. I'm good with it. So Sharon, yeah. let's talk about the expansion of that. 
because in the image strategist and working with people to know how to command the room doesn't mean coming in like you were a bull in the china cabinet because everybody doesn't have to accept anita but how do we navigate when we go into different environments you see what i'm saying with different cultures i think because we're going to have cultural competency long before we go to Harare before we go to Africa, because you want to understand the culture so that you can assimilate well, so that whatever you're putting on that platter, people want it. And we don't want it to be distorted because of the lack of knowledge. But when you're coaching and, and uh, Sharon Magic Jordan is definitely uh, available y'all uh, for that type of coaching in terms of the image strategist and you understanding your own persona and the own power that you have. It will be coupled in with the Build to Beyond campaign, but she is definitely an independent entrepreneur. And so if you need that type of supportive services, and let me say this, you're ready. You should know if you're ready. You still got some background work to do. That's a waste of someone's time because you can't put a new wine on wine skin on okay now that what that means is interpretation you know you haven't handled the stinking thinking you have never submitted to anyone to cause you to grow in the basic things you don't call an a team a, a team you know level trainer and you still need to go through the b the c the you know what i'm saying the d the c the b so that when you get to her you are ready for what it is that she has to offer we will be doing the coaching conferences and all of that kind of stuff. But I want her to, I want you to get a little feel because we're on stage, yeah. But when she's working one-to-one, -one, that area of expertise, she knows how to get right in there and meet you where you are. So if I were that person and I'm saying, you know, now that I know I'm worthy, this is how I've grown. I've you know, had therapy. I've gone through the lifestyle coaching. The way that I look, the way that I feel is not the way that I look. When I walk into a room, uh, nobody pays any attention. Um, I can walk up to people. What is it? Is it my posture? Is it the manner in which I, I look because the camera doesn't lie? You know, that kind of thing. If people are looking at me, what can you say to me? Because I still have to deal with the person I am when nobody else is in the room. Very good. That's, that's, that's excellent. First of all, I asked the first question, just like I did for the assignment that I gave you earlier. Who are you? Let's start there. Before we walk, <laughs> before we talk about wardrobe, your hair, who are you? It starts with a mindset. Mindset is everything. How are you thinking? How do you perceive you? Not what other people think. How do you perceive you? What, what do you look like to you? Oh, okay. So it's mindset. When you walk into the room, your spirit enters your room. Hello. Body language is 93% of communication. You don't have to say a word, sis. But when you walk in with the confidence, there it is. And I say it again, confidence is the body shaper of the mind. We're right back to the mind. Your confidence, how you really feel about yourself. Okay, I am. Who do you say you are? Not to what people's think you are. I have to talk to the client first. Who are you? Hello. Who are you? I am. What's your purpose? Have you found your purpose? And once you find your purpose, you find your wealth. Once you find your purpose, what am I here to do? Everybody pretty. Okay, let's get over it. Everybody beautiful. Everybody pretty. Now what? <laughs> what are you bringing to the table, sis? Your personality? What's your attitude like? Your attitude dictates wow. your altitude. You already know that. Oh, say uh, that again. Say that again. And would you go deep on that? Because people will take the cliche, get on their page and say it. What we want is, can you go just one or two points in there? Because there's a difference from being confident and cocky. Absolutely. So when I'm confident... Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's really amazing because I ask that question all the time. That's one of the questions. What is the difference? Because it's such a what? Thin line. It's a very thin line. 
Oh, I just heard a song. It's a thin line between love and hate. You know that about so okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> do it again, Sherry. Wait a minute, do it again. It's a thin line between love and hate. For Y'all yourself. Y'all don't want none of that for me. For yourself. <laughs> it's a very thin line uh -huh. between confidence. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And cocky. When I'm confident, this is the first answer I get. Um, it's when I'm sure. Okay, you can be sure that you're angry or you can be sure that you're arrogant too as well. Yes. But when you're confident, I have the ability, hear me, uh, to number one, compliment, welcome, uh-oh, other generals, other wonderful people. I don't have to be the big fish in the small pond. Are you hearing me? I have the ability to say, girl, you look wonderful. And I mean it. Why? I mean because it. Because I mean it. Because I am a brillionaire. Are you hearing me? It's a mindset. But when you're what? Cocky, it's negative. The confidence is the positive piece. Cocky is a negative piece that I have to put everyone else down to make myself look wonderful. I have to say negative things about others to make myself look real fab. No, 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 and no, no. What, and I want what, iron. Let me yes. put this in real quick. And one way that you'll know when no one else is in the room and it's just you, when you're searching for things about them, when you're searching for things about them in your mind, instead of just receiving, celebrating, and it's quiet, and now your mind goes off to search for something that's wrong, then you're in the wrong space right there. And it's not them, it is you. It's you. You, ha you have to cast that down. And what that means is you have to be, you have a resolve, make a mental decision that I am not going to be the accuser of my sister. I am not going to, every time I see her, I'm the only one that's got something crazy to say. Hello, somebody. That's good. That's good. You have to do it, but you have to own it yourself. yourself. All of this information is coming. If we open up all of these beautiful vessels, they will say something that will knock you off your feet. But we want to put your feet on the ground so that when you're in the room with yourself, you are not proselytizing the air, talking about Jesus to the air, but you are literally saying, Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me. I still got an attitude. I'm still always being negative. I'm always finding fault. I can't seem to find anything right with anybody. I say this, but you still need to do that. Come on here. That's what we're talking about. That's how you know that I know I'm worthy and there's room for Sharon. There's room for Pamela. There's Everybody. room for Bernadette as well. Go ahead, go ahead, Sharon. I'm sorry. No, I just no, no, this is good. I'm sorry, but I just want no, to get No, no, that's fabulous because I want other people to chime in too as well because this is how we work. Because a lot of times we're working with what's called shadow beliefs. Shadow beliefs. Things from the past. Things from the past. The trauma that caused the drama in your life. And this is why you're carrying on the way that you're carrying on. But when you're in entering a room, you don't know anyone, no one knows you, and you step into that room, my spirit, what's in your spirit? What are you really working with? That's the confidence piece. Do you know who you are? So when mm -hmm. I know who I am, it does not matter what's happening on the outside. What we try to do is try to get that stamp of approval from others when we have not stamped ourselves as worthy. Yes. When you have not given yourself permission to be you. It's okay. Wow. Isn't that what isn't that what Pam was saying uh earlier? I'm sorry, Joy. That's what yeah. Joy was saying it's earlier. It's okay to be you. Mm-hmm. She it's was okay. saying that earlier that I'm that I didn't, I didn't think I had a voice. You know, Bernadette said I had to shrink. I would shrink because I had to fit inside of a box that someone else created for me when I came as who I am. 
And that's where we map to. If you don't, if you don't want me, if you don't like me, if you don't want to hear from me, then don't invite me. It's okay, because if I can come, I'm coming as who I am. Do I have room to grow? And that's why we asked Sharon, who is um, the CEO and founder of the Image Strategist, to talk about that, dealing with your consciousness when you come in the room. Because when you can stand on the outside of the door and do your 10 breaths and say, I am a champion, and get on the other side of that door and fall on your face, because you're really not. And you need to deal with that. Come on, yes. Sharon. What you do is first... Step one is to be honest with yourself. That's the first step to deliverance. Be honest mm -hmm. with yourself. Um, I hear God uses me with music and it ain't always Kurt Franklin or CC Winding. So, so y'all- well, some of the people that's listening, some of them don't even know, so that's good. <laughs> okay, this, 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 this is where I am. So I tell all of my students to do this, to be honest or, or my clients because I teach teens too. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. That's prophetic. Y'all say whatever you want to say about Michael Jackson, whoever wrote it. To, you got to start with yourself. You got to take a look at yourself first. Because if you have not given yourself permission to be yourself or allowed yourself to be your authentic self and don't allow your truth to become a trap. I'm going somewhere here. Then you will begin to soar. Then you will begin to just listen. Mm. The glory will rise when you walk into a room. Magic. I got, you said something and I heard the converse of it. You said, don't allow your truth to be a trap. Yes. Well, someone's truth can be that they're shy. Someone's truth can be that they are suffering and tormented by depression or oppression. And you're saying, don't let that be your trap. What is the, and, and let's get Pamela G. I said it right this time. Pamela G. Uh, Sharon is talking about, don't let your truth become your trap. In what ways now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown where you no longer let a former truth become your trap? Okay, thank you so much, Anita. I love this. Um, <laughs> thank you so, so much. Thank you, and, Sharon. Um, <laughs> and thank you so much, Sharon, for sharing. And, um, you know, your former truth uh, becoming your trap, for me, it's really a release that I've had. Um, regarding the circumstances around my birth. Um, it's a truth. And I think I shared with the ladies yesterday yes. that, uh, yeah, that I was born as the last born and my birth seemed to be a mistake because my mother wasn't expecting that she was gonna have another child, you know? Um, but guess what? Um, over time, I have learned that, look, I'm not an inconvenience. I'm not a mistake. I'm meant to be here. And in more ways than one, God has confirmed that when I step out and just be my authentic self, especially one of my giftings is just reaching out to people and just being conversational and beginning to minister through just real conversations. I pick up certain things through conversations and I'm able to throw in nuggets from the Lord that way. And I've seen myself minister to so many that way, uh, both in business and just, you know, in general life. So for me, I've not allowed my truth, which is the truth about how I was born and how I came into this world to become a trap that keeps me from becoming my full authentic self, you know, um, in terms of what God has meant for me to be. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, nice. Joy, share with us how, because we want, we want you to, everybody's gleaning from what this wonderful, wonderful coach is saying, the image strategist of not allowing your truth to be your trap. Give us some feedback so she can hear from you what stands out to you. Okay. Um, what stands out to me is um, self-condemnation. 
you know, when I think of the things that I have done, <clears throat> things that are not, that are ungodly, that I cannot even begin to share. So those things were always in my mind, always in the way of me moving forward mm. until I learned that once you ask for forgiveness from God, he, he forgives you once and for all. So that self-condemnation would stop me from doing a lot of things. Like wow. I would, um, you know, if I think about it while I'm giving a presentation or something, I, I think people would notice that something has changed there. So mm -hmm. it was that. And, um, you know, seeing when I deal with a lot of women, seeing myself in them mm -hmm. that wow. I was once like that. So that has helped me not to condemn anyone else, not to condemn myself, first of all, and not to condemn other people. Mm. Oh. So compassion. That's a big word. That's a big word. That's a key word, condemnation. Mm -hmm. That's a big word, mm -hmm. condemnation. First of all, everybody needs to forgive themselves first. Forgive yourself aggressively, not just, are you hearing me? Yes. Forgive yourself aggressively, not just, oh, I forgive, I forgive others. Can you forgive yourself? Hey, Akia, can you forgive yourself? First of all, a lot of us are busy serving others and have forgot to serve ourselves. Yeah, someone said that the other day. Yes, yes, I'm yes. telling you, we're so busy worrying about what, can I help this one? Can we do this? Can I, see, you were not built to carry people. You're built to support only. Support, support, support. Learn to serve yourself. That's not cocky. That's not arrogant. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Condemnation. That means you don't feel too great about yourself. Condemnation. You're not feeling too good about, but that's because of some shadow beliefs, some past things that happened in your life that you did not forgive yourself. Come on, can we clean out the clutter? Yes. The corners yeah. of our minds. The corners of the stuff that you didn't tell nobody, the things that you didn't really share verbally with anybody, but you know it's there mm -hmm. in the corner, in the back, in the booth. But every now and then it comes back up to the surface, doesn't it? It creeps mm -hmm. right back because whatever is in you is going to come out. So let's just make ourselves a committee of one. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. That we can search ourselves and really be true. Who the heck am I? And why am I here? Once we get past those two things, I'm telling you, the wealth, the confidence, all that other stuff will fall into place. And when you walk into a room, back to commanding the room, the favor that you would get because you have been obedient. So obedient receives uh, uh, the favor, which leads to the blessing. I feel like teaching right here. First, you must be obedient to God, the will of God. Then the favor comes, which leads to the blessing. Does that make sense to anybody? So I heard T.D. Jake say years ago, favor ain't fair, that's a lie. Favor is fair because favor is automatic when you are obedient. There's nobody here. So let me ask you a question for the person that is wanting to expand the person yes. that knows they have that destiny to go further and they've suffered from condemnation and that's real that's not anything somebody's just throwing water at and gonna no. toss it it takes time to mature and being mature yes, about yourself how does compassion erode and dismiss con self-condemnation does compassion for yourself have any place in self-condemnation? Uh-huh. First of all, how many people have affirmations? No, seriously, I'm not just saying words. I can go around this room right now. I don't know what triggers you. I don't, want, I don't know what blows your hair back. I don't know, I don't know. But your words, the words that you're speaking over, you can speak this thing, oh, you can speak the life, you can speak the death over your life. First of all, what are you saying about yourself? Okay, I don't feel good. I've, 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 I've condemned myself. Um, I don't feel great. Can you say something good about yourself? No, no, really. 
and mean it from your heart. Is there any good thing in you that you can say about yourself? Exactly. I'll wait. Uh, one good thing you can say about yourself. I was not always there. I had to be delivered from what I thought I was. What did that progress, what did that process look like for you? Because when people see Sharon Magic Jordan, you know what I mean? And the, and the boldness and, and the dynamic, and we ain't gonna talk about the beauty, all right? Uh, Just fabulous all every day of the week and twice over. And we love you for it. One of the things that we're doing now as we've grown with Sister Sounds is we're pulling back that cover. What was your process like for you? Just one, one thing that, that you was like, oh, here I go again, but I'm going on anyhow. This isn't gonna stop me. Okay, well, first of all, I'm gonna go back to what I said before. I had to learn the power of meditation versus prayer. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna give you the queen's wave. I had to learn that one, y'all. Yeah, because when all you meditate, talking, I'm telling those thoughts to be going all in your head. Because I'm sitting with myself. Yep. Who are There's you no in outside. the room? Yes. There's no music. Yes. There's nobody saying, "Hey, man." Ooh, yes, girl. You, 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 fabulous. Yeah. Uh huh. When you meditate and you sit and you take the time to be with yourself. What's talking? Your mind. What comes up first? Because you know what? The mind always takes you to the worst first. Always. For some strange Absolutely. Reason, it goes to Absolutely. the worst first. So I learned to meditate. So those thoughts which just I say, oh my God, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna leave a mark. But see, what I learned to do, Anita, <laughs> ooh, it's just to be so uh, to thine own self be true. There it is. You that, cannot hide from you. you can't you hide from can't you. Hide Thank you. From yourself. You cannot hide from you. Everywhere <laughs> you go, uh, 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 there you are. Is that the old days, Akia? Help me. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you, you can't hide from yourself. Uh -uh. You can try to fool the people all you want, dress how you want, hook up with whoever you want to hook up with. But what's happening when you're by yourself? What's happening when you're all alone? How do you feel when you're all by yourself? So meditation helped me. That was my thing, that I could sit with myself. And then I learned to be open to everything, but not attached to nothing. That's a good point right there. And we're gonna have to wrap up just a little bit because we want Joy to talk uh, okay. more about the thing. Okay. And, but I want, and I know that you'll be back tomorrow. We can pick it up from there and go deeper. And if you've noticed, we've gone from uh, how do you know, or now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? We've looked at our values and identified that one thing that still wants to hang on. And now Joy brought, I'm sorry, Pamela brought it out about condemnation. And, and Sharon is saying to command the room, the one, the room inside of you, before you get to anyone else, you've got to command what's going on inside of you so that you can then be authentic to you, truthful before God. The Bible says in the eyesight of God, but in the consciousness of all men. So what you think about me does matter because if I say I'm representing the King of King and the Lord of Lords and I'm stinking thinking and I'm not playing fair and all this other kind of stuff, then in your consciousness, what you think about me is real. What you think about me has potency. And so what Sharon is saying to us is that we've got to command the room within us. Meditation means to be aware. Doesn't mean you're thinking about a lot of things. You got that one thing that has been holding you up, holding you back, limit, limiting you. You haven't found the right wind in which to soar. You start here, you go there, you've got to wait on it. And while you're waiting, she's telling us, Command the room, command this room, yes. mindfulness. It's so fine. you all are taking notes. Please, when you hear the replay, we want you to take notes. Some of you need to be on stage with us so you could ask those questions. Or if you put those questions in the comments, we will answer them. We will get to them and answer them. I wanna go around the room really quick, Sharon, because we're getting up to the hour of one. And then tomorrow, I think you'll be, you'll be with us tomorrow as well, you yes. think? 
Oh, absolutely wonderful. So we're going to start out with um, Sharon Magic Jordan. I, I'm going to say that at Carnegie Hall. I'm going to say it just Jeez. like that when we got thousands of Akia, women in Africa. Akia, get her. Akia, get her. Akia, <laughs> Akia, uh, Akia, get her. She ain't going to get nothing because I'm going to do what I want to do. Akia. Listen. <laughs> I just thought we just needed to smile just a little bit, y'all. It's okay. You know, you, I'm going to do it. Yes, I am. Thousands of women. And I'm always going to do that because that's how I love my sister. You know, I just, it's like that. All right, what am I going to do? I'm stuck with it. I'm stuck with the love. Kia, come on and say something to us now that you know you are worthy. Um, how have you grown? How have you grown? And who are you? when no one else is in the room. Hi, everybody. Um, excuse the noise. I am at school with my kids. I stepped out for a moment so I could come into the, into the room. I have noticed and began to learn about myself. I am not who people perceive me to be when I'm by myself. I'm very, um, at times, oh gosh, I can't even explain it. At times I am, I condemn myself at times. And a lot of people see me to be strong and see me to be bold and see me to be courageous. But at times by myself, I'm really nervous. I'm really scared. I'm really Lord, is this where you desire me to be? So there's a lot of moments where I question, why me? Oh, you really pushing me, Lord. And I'm at that place right now to where I try not to let others' opinions and what they think of me not bother me. But at times, I think that that little girl that was rejected, that was adopted at two, like, she said, live in your truth. Let the truth be the truth. Don't, don't get trapped in it. And I'm really at that point where I'm fighting to not be trapped in that truth. Because yes, that was me, but that is not who I am. That's not So yeah. I am really fighting and learning to rest in my papa. Because it's, 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 it's easy to say rest, get yes. rest but it's hard to rest right. and release. Thank you, thank you so much. And, and I would say to you, one of the things that has helped me so much in the last three years is that the women that I am in company with, and I said this before, a lot of people say, oh, I'm alone, I'm alone. I go, no, you're not. You've been insulated, not isolated. And the only reason that you feel alone is you're not in the right company. Leave the company that disparages you and come on over here where we're going to celebrate you and you won't feel that way. It's uh, trust Papa, trust Papa, because Papa is that part, that intimate part with God, but God is not limited to Papa. God, Father God is source for all of our resources. I'm a resource. All right. Sharon's a resource. Joy is a resource. Pam is a resource. Bernadette and Donna, we're resources. And we will echo back to you the truth of yes. who God is in you. Mm -hmm. I don't even think about that stuff anymore. I don't have to go into my secret closet and write out my notes anymore. I say them out loud. I don't care what nobody say because you ain't in my company anyway. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't be that bold, should I? Yes, I should. You're yeah. not going to invite me anyway. So I set my own table and the women that are coming, the people that are coming have a sympathetic resonance, Sharon, which means if there's a C sharp in you and I hit a C sharp in me, it resonates. So you're never alone. You're just in the never. wrong company. Never. Come, come on, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. Come on, Donna, give us some closing remarks. Akia, we love you so much. We ain't never letting you go. Wait, wait, I, I gotta global. say one thing We're to Akia. One us. thing, one thing, one thing. Please, she says, please, go ahead. She said that sometimes she's, she, 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 she condemns herself. How many people are guilty of that? No, tell the truth. Oh, absolutely. Don't, don't tell the truth. See, this is, what I, this is what I don't like about religious people. Because what happens is, how can you have faith if you have not doubted? That's right. How can you have faith if you've never been in doubt? 
Am I making sense? So of it's course, okay. Of course. Go ahead. So what you have to do is you have to learn to temper that thing a little bit at a time, Akia. A little bit, one day at a time, one step at a time. A little bit, at, it starts peeling off like layer by layer. And it's okay. And before you know, you'll be out the box, girly girl. You'll be out and running, especially with the generation God has called you to. Yes. This generation is not a joke. You better come correct or not at all. Awesome. True and authentic. Okay. Okay. And everybody can take that instruction that nothing happens overnight. No. It is a day by new mercies we see every day. Mercy meaning grace. Grace meaning ability. Insight, foresight, depth of knowledge. So that you're clear about what you're thinking. And if you want to continue to think that way, the choice is always yours to move forward. That's it. If you choose not to, you won't. If you engender, if you train yourself to not move forward, you won't. And somebody said the other day, go scared. Go scared. I love it. Use love it, it to catapult you into the wind that will capture and hold up the vision that God has for you. We better chill it right there. Joy. We got to, I'm not Joy, forgive me. Yes, Joy, Joy, Joy. I was going to call Pam Joy, Joy Pam. Uh, <laughs> but Joy, please talk to us about CTT. They need, we need to hear. We're going to give us 10 more minutes for her to just, y'all take notes. Please take notes so you understand why God said, say yes to the Center for Total Transformation. And yeah, I said God said yes to the Center for Total Transformation. Talk to us about CTT Joy. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me say, first of all, the name Center for Total Transformation. It's a name which I believe 100% that it came from God directly. Um, because when I was starting the organization 23 years ago, God put in mind and he put something in my heart about uh, mental transformation, social, economic, just a whole lot of things which um, may be called holistic, holistic approach to community development. But God gave me that name, Total Transformation. And as I listen to what we are, what, what is being taught this week and what is being said, today it, it really it um resonates with the center for total transformation um the the assignment which i got was to work with um disadvantaged communities especially women and children and for the past 23 years that's what um we have concentrated on um, in the past, we worked a lot in the rural areas of Zimbabwe, um, building uh, toilets where people had no toilets, uh, digging water wells, setting up community gardens, you know, just um, learning from the community on how they do agriculture and teaching other people and gathering people together. I think that the biggest thing that we did in rural communities was um, it, it came to a stage where at one point every week on a Wednesday in this rural community in Zimbabwe, about um, 500 women would gather from different villages to come and share and network, share the word of God, share their stories. And it went on and on. And um, we then started looking after the children because they were a lot of um, orphans and vulnerable children. So we are still concentrating on those two, two, um, two, two sets of people, the women and the children. Um, I, I think the most profound statement that I've heard this week is about confidence is the body shaper of the mind. <laughs> and yeah. that, that's going to be, I'm going to put it somewhere where I can see it every day. Because as we, as we deal with people, as we deal with them, um, it doesn't matter whether it's um, grown-ups or, or um, children, they need that confidence. They do. In fact, confidence starts when you're a little 
child. Yes. It starts as, you know, it, it, how the, the mothers are addressing their children and the way they talk to them. And that builds up that confidence. Education builds up confidence. Skills programs that we do with the women, the sewing, they do sewing. They um, come and learn about some um, doing hair different different from where what they've been doing they learn so many skills soap making all kinds of things that um gives them confidence that gives them an economic advantage over some people who are just sitting at home when the women come to our center the other thing we encourage them to do is to play sports you know a lot of times especially back home and probably here too, when you reach a certain stage, you feel like, uh, you, you know, you cannot play soccer, you cannot play, you cannot do sports, you cannot run, but we encourage the women who come to the center to get into that, to exercise their bodies, to, to free their minds and um, just using different programs to, is stress busters because they are stressed. Women, we are stressed. So we have to let out that stress. So a lot of the things that we are talking about here apply. They apply back home and we are doing it at a, a different scale. But uh, the, the whole point is um, empowering the communities. I know I've said that my, I, I feel that my calling and my concentration is on women and children, but I also feel that as we leave men out, we are creating another problem because mm -hmm. the women will come to the center and be mentally transformed, uh, economically empowered and you know skilled, and the, we, the men are staying behind. Uh -huh. And when they go back home, trouble, because they are not moving together and the men are getting jealous, the women, you know, it's all kinds of friction which come into play. Mm. So we are learning as we go, uh, go on with, the, with God's program that um, we need to touch the whole community. Uh, our motto for the organization is called Touching Lives, Inspiring Lives, Transforming Communities. You inspire one life at a time, and that life, when it's as in, inspired, that life goes back into the community, and people will notice a change in that life, and they are bound to be inspired as well. They are bound to change. Some little change will take place. So one life at a time. Um, the other thing we do, we, we've got, I mentioned the other day that we have about 600 children who come to the center and about um, 100 plus women who come to the center daily. Wow. Um, we cannot offer them housing. They are coming from houses where, oh gosh, I, I, I can't call them houses. They are sharks, they are plastic sharks. They, they are uh, what they call, I think Paul and Daga just something to cover themselves. So mm -hmm. what we have, we've been doing is that if, when we find people who want to sponsor a room and one room would be housing a family of six or more, but it's better than what, you know, the way they are living right now. So people in the past have sponsored rooms. People in the past have sponsored water wells they sponsored different things. My, my, personal, my personal dream is um, the, the, uh, to empower these women and children in education and skills. And yes. I would love to see, as I would love to see Center for Total Transformation together with the communities and together with the um, various um, supporters from around the world set up some industry, set up a sewing industry, a, a factory, you know, set something big mm -hmm. which will bring employment and skills to the community because um, as uh, desperate as they are, they, they are tired of handouts. 
Absolutely. Handouts, you can only eat, you know, you'll be given a, a, a groceries basket, a food basket, a food hamper, and it only lasts a few days. So we need to empower people. And um, when I first started Center for Total Transformation, one thing which I did right away was to purchase a piece of land. It's a small piece of land, but it's better than nothing. So we do agriculture there and people work in the fields and they carry food home. A lot of people in that community do not own their own land. So it's, uh, it's not that easy to do agriculture where they live because they can be in one place for a month and they are kicked out and they go to another place. So when we work with communities, it's, it's holistic. We don't look at one thing and say, we are going to fix the water or education only. When, once you start dealing with communities, it's something else. It's just the whole works. Just two days ago, I got a message from, from the women, Anita, and they were saying there's this lady with a, with a boy who is diabetic and all she needs is $15 a month to get the insulin. So you hear stories like that, you know, like uh, Anita, you met Mr. Mplanga, the, the, you, you visited him at his house. Yes, Mr. Mplanga, that, I love her. <laughs> yes, you, oh he just, you know, so you meet, all these things are going on in the communities because there's no, there's no wealth, there's, you know, there's nothing to lean on and, um, I would like to see something being done that brings an income, a wealth generation project. So let me jump in. Let me jump in there because um, as you know, IBH Sister Sounds World now has on our website, a giving link. You can go to www.ibhsistersounds.world, www.ibh sistersounds.world and then click on the Africa project and uh, Joy we have there we're going to add the burners uh, because I don't think the burners are on there but you can and we're going to add the home where you can sponsor a two room with running water you can sponsor two of them for three thousand dollars it's like 29.88 something i was like i don't like those kind of numbers just three thousand three thousand dollars and you can sponsor fully fully built i'm talking with everything two major rooms um two of them two homes for three thousand dollars you have people that pay that for a pair of shoes you can do that now It will go in your name. You will receive a 501c3 receipt donation. So as you are giving, you're able to do that. If you say you're the person that wants to sponsor that $15 a month, on that link, you can say, I want to sponsor monthly this amount targeted towards this particular item, and it will go for that. Again, we're asking that you go to www.ibh Sister Sounds World. I B as in boy, H as in Harry, Sister Sounds World. We are at 501c3, completely federal C3. However, we're not raising the money because when we raise it, there has to be administration fees. It's going from that link to their account. No middlemen. We want to do that for the whole year. And when we all travel there, and I want you to come go, when we all travel there, in fact, uh, Pamela and I are meeting uh, tomorrow about that so we can get the Airbnb set up. We know about the security. We have everything in place. Start planning because Akia, some of the women there would love to learn how to do makeup professionally. Some would love to, they're in cosmetology. We could hold a workshop. We have Mary Jane who blings and that's a great industry. I've already spoken with someone who has warehouses full of fabric where I told him I that's why I almost just laid over on the floor because Joy I told him I wanted us to have a factory there really (laughs) we never talked about it we never discussed that I know we didn't talk about it and uh, 
Sharon uh, has already, we've talked about it as well, and we're making it known because she is in the industry of fashion um, that we want to have a traveling, a traveling mm -hmm. um, fashion extravaganza as creative director that she will helm and a great percentage of that. We got a budget with that, y'all. So don't be acting cuckoo. We know the folks that are gonna do it have to get paid. But if we're doing it enough, then we understand that I'd rather have a percentage of 100% that goes four or five times in a year, right? Because we need this wonderful woman to be free to do what she needs to do. You're hearing me clear. We can't do it if we're bound to somebody else's stuff. This is just first level for us. Say with me, ain't nobody scared. Come on, say with scared. me, ain't nobody <laughs> scared, all right? Scared. We have full intention. I was in a two hour meeting last night submitting to the council of people who know how to work with millions, billions of dollars. Ain't nobody scared. We didn't come this far to leave God. Huh? We're not talking about him leaving us. He doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. We're going all the way. We're not gonna speak at all because you don't speak dream that far in advance. But what we're speaking now, go to www.ibhsistersounds.world, click the Africa Project. We're looking for partners. We know, Bernadette, come on off of, you've got your hand raised, I know you wanna talk. Bernadette and her outreach ministry is a partner. Donna represents uh, Wells, not, well, not representing Wells Fargo, I'm not gonna say that. She represents industry of communications and she's one of our partners. Charlotte is our focal point for one of the landing, you know, we're gonna come in for a landing there with the building to be on campaign. Come on, Bernadette. Oh, I'm sorry. My hand was raised when she, um, when Sharon asked the question <laughs> and oh, I didn't okay. know it was still <laughs> raised. I'm sorry. I don't have anything to say. Alrighty. Well, we want you to come and go with us. We know that you have your own design company and do sewing. That may be the area that you would tithe your gifting to teach the women special techniques on how to do certain things. We're, if you have people in your community that you know have great skill, get, get the buy-in, get the buy-in. And it may be a vacation for them. And all we're asking is if you're gonna hang with us and be in one of our Airbnbs, you gotta do a workshop somewhere. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's it. They can go and do whatever they want after that, you know, but they have to come and contribute because we're going to be purpose-filled, purposeful women and men who care. And we show it, we don't talk it, all right? We will take as many people as want to. There are some people who can't go. Please let them know this is worthy. This is worthy. We want to do this for a year so that when we walk into the corporations and we say, this is what we've done together globally for this one spot, you can't do 10, can't be all over the map. They don't trust that. You just mean to tell me you raised over, you built how many homes, dug how many wells, and you did it with no budget? Yes. Now we need your money. I ain't scared to ask for it but I got good sense. You have to show them first. We have to have the results. Anyone else, Akia, any closing words for you, my dear? You good? Okay. All right. Donna, come on and give us some closing words. Well, this has been very fruitful for my soul. I look forward for tomorrow. Thank, Thank you so you. much for all your support. Yes, yes, yes. Pamela G. Um, as always, this has been very good for me as well. Uh, and my last words are, do it afraid. Just step out and do it. Do it even when you feel scared and you will be amazed at the result. I've taken risks and I've seen the Lord just prop me up. And so I want to encourage everyone, do it afraid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Yes, this was much needed. Oh, okay. Akia says, yes, this was much needed. We're putting some glue on you. Yes, because when we get, when we get, listen, magic, we get Akia over in Africa and she starts singing, you can't lose. I can hear the drums going out. We're going to be going, hey. <laughs> I can see them going now. The sister's going to be going, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I love it. I love it. Good. It's good. Joy, thank you so much for sharing your vision and allowing us to serve your vision. Uh, Pamela, thank you so much for your consistency. Sharon Magic Jordan, I'm gonna say this from the heart, all of my heart, not the bottom, because the bottom ain't the whole heart. 
We <laughs> honor you so much. So excited for your business. You know, I'm more than in your corner. All my angels are assigned to help support that. Yes. And Thank Bernadette, you. we're excited about the expansion of what of who you are and what you're doing. We come in the Mississippi, baby. Tell, <laughs> tell old Miss to get ready. We're going to need the stadium. All right. <laughs> we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. I love you. Listen, guys, you know what I'm about to say. Continue to live according to the rhythm of God's grace towards you. God bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.